last time we saw that we can split the angular momentum of a rigid body into two parts where one part is due to the translation of the center of mass so let me write it trans translation okay and other part is due to um its rotation or uh, due to purely due to its rotation okay and that is what we call intrinsic angular momentum this capital m and this is what is our um angular momentum okay let me write m is the intrinsic angular momentum and this split we got because we chose the origin of the body axis to be at the center of mass so origin of body axis origin of body axis at the center of mass of the body okay and then also we saw that i can write down the intrinsic angular momentum m to be the following it it had the form i i maybe right i should write in components so if i'm looking at the ith component of the angular momentum then it is equal to this inertia tensor whose components are given by i i k and then you have the angular velocity vector omega k there is a summation over k and i and k all run from 1 to 3 okay they take this value 1 2 3 and let me remind you our omega is the angular velocity of the body angular velocity of the rigid body okay and what is the direction of this omega this direction is along the axis of instantaneous rotation is along the axis sorry along the direction not axis along the direction 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 of omega is along the direction of instantaneous rotation okay remember we proved uh chesel's theorem where we showed that the most general motion of a rigid body is that of a rotation about an axis which we call instantaneous axis and also a tr translation along the same axis okay in some cases you may your body may not be translating and just purely rotating but anyway so that that is how you got the definition of uh instantaneous axis of rotation okay and then we wrote down the components of inertia tensor maybe i'll spend 10 seconds writing that down so this is by i am denoting inertia tensor if if you don't like this you can put a bold face and let's recall what was there we had summation over m y square plus z square okay that was your uh, first component of this matrix three cross three matrix and uh, if your body is not made up of discrete particles which will be mostly the case in which you will be interested then of course the summation over m is to be taken as an integral over all the uh, all the mass points okay so you imagine a uniform density let's say for your body mass density and then you uh, integrate over integrate over all the all the over all the body so that is what it will be and then you have minus summation m x y minus summation m x z minus m x y you remember it is symmetric so these two should be equal m x square plus y square 
note that the diagonal entries which I'm writing here they are always sum of squares okay so you have y square plus z square plus uh, and this one is x square plus y square which means that your diagonal entries can only be positive or maybe zero if depending on how your uh, body is made okay m x z m y z and m x square plus y square your off diagonal entries are not enjoying that property that they are sum of squares okay but your uh, diagonal entries are anyhow so uh, let's look at some properties of inertia tensor and as i said for those of you who have not ever um, studied tensors this is not going to prove to be of any handicap uh, i'm not going to utilize any of the properties of uh, a tensor in this okay so you for you it's a matrix okay so it's a three cross three real symmetric matrix which you know then you can diagonalize meaning you can uh, if you recall what we did in um, when we were studying oscillations okay we just do the same thing so i can choose i can do a principal axis transformation meaning i can rotate my coordinate axis such that in new axis this tensor would have only diagonal entries okay so i will be able to diagonalize this so in principal axis So let's say my I've done a rotation of my coordinate axis, and I've chosen a new set, and again I'm labeling the space uh, the the points of the body by x y z. Okay, so I'm not going to create some x prime y prime z prime. I I still use x y z, but they are different from x y z here. Okay, because I've changed the coordinate. So in this new principal axis, your inertia tensor will be diagonal. Okay, as you as you know already, and what would they be? they would be m y square plus z square 0 0 0 0 0 and the final entry would be okay this is what you're going to get um, I, I hope there is no confusion that um, this entry or whatever you get here let's say you, you calculate this quantity and whatever you have here they will be different okay these are completely different quantities anyhow so now you see your um, let me let me just write it down to be sure that there is no confusion your x y and z are with respect to the principal axis okay um, these quantities these uh, entries on the diagonal they are called principal moments of inertia okay these are called principal moments so let me write down the diagonal entries they are called principal moments okay and gener generally generally they are labeled as i1 i2 i3 okay okay then um, as you have already noted your principal moments can either be positive or zero okay so principal mm, i1 i2 i3 positive or zero which implies that your inertia tensor i is a positive semi definite matrix
ओके पॉजिटिव सेमी डेफिनेट मैट्रिक्स और पॉजिटिव सेमी डेफिनेट टेंसर ओके नाउ इफ यू आर वर्किंग इन प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस देन लेट्स आस्क हाउ आवर इंट्रेंसिक एंगुलर मोमेंटम looks like in in this axis so i'm i'm looking at the ith component of uh angular momentum okay sometimes i will not say intrinsic angular momentum i'll just say angular momentum because that's the only thing we are looking at right now so it will be i i k omega k that's the general expression but because we are using inertia um principal axis my i i k is proportional not proportional but uh, it has only diagonal entries so it will be delta i k okay this will be multiply with i i which are the principal moments okay so if you look at this there is no summation over i here remember i is a free index on the left so it has to be free index on the right which means that i cannot have a summation over i even though it is repeated okay so it's not there there is a summation over k which is implied i hope this is clear because let's see this um let's put i equal to 1 okay so what do you have here you have i1 delta 1 1 right and this is what you should get here um sorry um sorry i1 delta 1 k right so you will get only um a uh, diagonal entries for this matrix okay so this is correct and with this i can write it as i i and omega k times delta i k where k is summed becomes just omega i okay and again i should emphasize there is no summation over i no summation okay so which means that my um angular momentum if i look at the first component it is just i1 times omega 1 if i look at second component it is i2 times omega 2 m3 is i3 omega 3 now clearly there are several possibilities for um the values that i1 i2 and i3 take and let me list those down here i should go to the next page so there are several possibilities possibility number 1 is that i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i3 meaning all the three principal uh moments are equal okay then the second possibility would be i1 is equal to i2 so two of them are same but not the third one sorry <laughs> so third one is not the same as the first two but other two are equal and then there is a let me write down here possibility that your none of the principal moments are equal and there's a fourth possibility which is partly included in one of these is that um one of the moments is zero so let's call it i3 equal to zero Okay, I'll come back to this one. So here, I want to write one of the moments to be zero. Okay, let's look at uh, this first case when all the three moments are equal. Okay, you should convince yourself this is fairly easy to uh, see that this corresponds to a spherically symmetric mass distribution. Okay, so uh, you have a spherical symmetry about the origin. Okay, and such a spherically symmetric thing. is called a spherical top now all the rigid bodies are tops everything is a is a top okay so uh, generically they are called tops so this is a case of spherical top this one is 
you can see that um, you should convince yourself that this corresponds to a mass distribution which is symmetric about one axis okay so for example you think of the top which uh, with which you might have played in your childhood so that one um, has a symmetry axis which is if you are holding it in your hand the the nail of this top is giving you the direction of the symmetry axis okay and you have symmetry around that and this corresponds to uh, that configuration that mass distribution and it is not spherical but it has a symmetry so it is called symmetric top okay and this one is asymmetric top okay now how uh, how do you find the principal moments for a spherical top well any any axis will be a uh, will be the principal axis because of the symmetry if you, if you choose a different uh, set of axes nothing changes everything looks the same so all coordinate axes all body axes okay are principal axes which means that uh, independent of what body axis you have chosen you will always get the inertia tensor to be diagonal in this case okay okay let's go here now how do i find my um, principal axis well it's clear we should choose um, one of the um, the one of the axis of the body to be along the direction of symmetry which in this case is along the z axis okay and the other two which will be perpendicular to this symmetry axis can be taken any 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 two of them okay so any two which are perpendicular to each other will do the job because if instead of choosing let's say let's say this one correspond to z axis okay so your let's say you have a symmetrical top which looks like okay does not look very symmetric but you you imagine that it is symmetric and it has a symmetry axis which is this the z axis okay it has to pass through the center of mass okay and you see there is a symmetry uh, about this axis now you can choose any pair if instead of this you rotate this entire x y axis to by some degree it will still serve as a principal axis because of the symmetry okay so principal axis one of them should be along the axis of symmetry second it has it has to pass through the center of mass okay and then thirdly the other two axes i will call them x and y can be any two in the plane okay so th these two of course also have to be through the origin so look at this xy plane and if you don't want to use these two as your axis you can choose this and that okay and any two they will work okay that's good um yeah and here in this case of course there is no symmetry so you'll have to explicitly find p l i c i t explicitly find it out so you take some coordinate axis get the inertia tensor diagonalize it and find the principal axis okay and let me yeah so let's return back to the case of spherical top for the case of spherical top all these three are equal and i will call them 
to be i don't confuse with your inertia tensor this is a scalar quantity just one number okay and clearly my m is now i omega okay why because you see all these are same so it's just um, your angular momentum is proportional to omega so now in this case if your body is rotating about some axis the angular momentum will also be pointing along the same direction okay along the direction of rotation so this is uh, one special case now here uh, for the symmetric top you do not have um, you do not have uh, this that um, your angular momentum points in the direction of uh, point, does not point along the direction of um, rotation or along the sorry so for symmetric top in general your angular momentum does not point along the direction of rotation axis that is not true okay it doesn't happen but if you uh, choose to have your omega pointing along one of the principal axis so let's say third axis you could have chosen first or second but let's say i choose angular momentum to be uh, sorry angular velocity to be this then your m1 m2 will be zero because omega 1 and omega 2 are zero so it becomes zero and only m3 survives and you get m3 to be non zero which means your m as i said the first two components are zero and only i3 omega will survive which means your m will be um i3 omega okay in this case so if you are going to rotate your body about one of the principal axis then only the angular momentum will be pointing along that um, along that direction along along the uh, axis of symmetry oh, sorry along the axis of rotation not otherwise okay in, in general omega and m will point in different directions okay um that's good let me also yeah one thing here i i remember that during in the class students have difficulty imagining a top rotating in a direction different than the direction of symmetry axis okay so they were having difficulty in imagining that they can make the instantaneous axis of rotation for the top different from the uh different from the 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 symmetry axis okay so they always have imagined or seen the the top to be spinning about this nail okay so they somehow always feel that omega can only point along the nail okay but i would encourage you to convince yourself that that is not true it's not the most general thing you can make your top rotate about an axis which makes some angle theta with the nail with the direction of the nail okay um, um this is one thing i would encourage and i would encourage that you do not um, try to see somewhere why this is true and spend some time thinking about it if this is not obviously clear to you okay and then um yeah and then we look at as i said the last thing as a object of a linear configuration this is called a rotator okay so you think of a line which is let's say along z axis okay so you think a mass distribution which is kept along z axis then let's go back and see and of course you i'm assuming that i have chosen the principal axis such that one of them is ab along z in that case you will have z will be something but y will be zero for all the particles in this in this uh line x will also be zero okay here is a mistake 
x square plus z square. Did I make that mistake again? Here also. Let's go back. Was it incorrect there? That it was fine here. Okay. So this is sorry. This is x square plus z square. This is also x square plus z square. So because your um, body is only about z axis, all the y and x components are zero. Okay, which means that this this piece i3 will be zero and only i1 and i2 will survive and this thing is called a rotator okay so now that we have some understanding of um, inertia tensor and principal axis we will continue our discussion with um, i mean in the next time i i would like to look at motion of a symmetric top okay the top with which we have played in our childhood um, it's simple motion but not in some gravitational field just in free space and that itself is uh, having some interesting things to to tell okay so see you in the next video then